Texturing in Blender. Are you a loser? Does your family not love you? Can you not get a girlfriend? Well, in this video, I'm not going to fix any of those problems. I am going to show you how to texture objects in Blender. Um, I've made a few videos like this before, but this is going to be a more in-depth uh, guide to texturing. I'm going to give you guys all I know about texturing, which isn't a lot, but I'm going to give you guys what I know. So anyway, let's get right into the video. So to get started texturing in Blender, we're going to need some textures. Now, where do you get these textures at, and where can you get good textures that don't look like you just downloaded a grass image off of Google? Well, I have three websites right here that I'm going to show you that have free textures. So, uh, the first one is cc0textures.com. Um, it is the one that I use mainly. I get pretty much all my textures that I use when I texture objects from this site. Uh, the next one is textures.com. Uh, this one's a little bit weird because some textures you have to pay for, some textures you don't. Uh, but it's still pretty good. And then Texture Haven, Texture Haven, um, like it says right here, 100% free textures for everyone. Um, all you do on this site is just go and then click on this little button over here on the right. This is textures. And then you have a ton of PBR textures right here. Um, CC0 textures, all you would do is just click explore all 1268 assets. And then you have a bunch of textures right here. Um, now, I'm not sure between the quality of the textures between CC0 textures and Texture Haven. Uh, but... Hey, they're both free, both uh, PBR textures. PBR, uh, uh, getting into my next point. Uh, textures, the way you texture and the way you can make textures look good is PBR. PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering, or Physically Based Render, or something, I don't... Anyway, um, basically, the difference between slapping just a JPEG on an object and then using a PBR material is... That JPEG that you would just slap on an object is called a color map or an albedo. Um, pretty much the same thing. Diffuse, albedo, color map. They're all the same thing. It's basically your base color um, for your texture. Um, I'm going to get into that a little bit more in depth uh, when we actually download these textures and apply them. But um, I like this uh, Rocks Ground 02. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And I'm going to download all maps. You can see the maps that I was talking about right here. Uh, you have an ambient occlusion map, which you can't really use in um, using the principle of BSDF and Blender. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong on that. But as far as I know, there's no real um, node uh, connection to do that with. Um, I can try to do something with it later. I might, I might figure something out, but... Uh, for now, we're going to focus on these. Uh, color map, height map, normal map, and roughness map. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and download all maps. Um, you can choose a size. I'm going to go with 4K. Um, typically, uh, texturing objects, um, I wouldn't go anything less than 4K unless it's a background object, just so you have as much detail as possible in your texture. Um, 8K is if you want um, just very very high detail like if it's something really close up but I wouldn't use a lot of AK textures because it can slow down your render very very much a lot um, and it can use a lot of VRAM from your graphics card so um, right here uh, I just downloaded the JPEG version you can also download the PNG files they're just bigger um, and lossless quality unlike JPEG but well, once you have your texture you can go ahead and open it up in whatever um, archive you have, like I have one RAR, um, and you have all these maps right here. So uh, go ahead and extract all these maps to some folder. Uh, I'm just going to go to my desktop and just extract it into some random folder that I don't have any textures in, because uh, I have textures in like every folder on my desktop. Uh, but anyway, uh, now that we have our texture downloaded, you can download any texture you want. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go into Blender here, and we're going to look at our lovely default cube, and we're going to end its life real quick by pressing the delete button on our keyboard. And once we're left in an empty void, we can hit shift A and then mesh and then plane. Uh, I'm going to scale up the plane by hitting S on my keyboard and then typing 10. That's going to scale the plane up 10 times. I'm going to hit control A and then apply all transforms. That basically um, resets the transform value of the object back to zero. Um, some t the reason you would do that is sometimes UV mapping and texture mapping can be weird on that if the scale isn't set to one. Um, so, yeah, um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, if I press N on my keyboard to bring up this um, toolbox right here, uh, under item, we can see scale is at 1 right now, but if we scale it up by, like, 2, uh, then the scale is at 2. 
and we want the scale to be at 1, so if we hit Control A and then apply all transforms, that goes back to 1, but I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Uh, so we just have our plane right here, um, and now we can apply, start applying our textures to this. So um, all the base meshes and blenders, such as the plane, cube, circle, UV sphere, icosphere, cylinder, cone, and torus, um, they're pretty much already UV mapped. Um, some of them won't work well with textures, like for example, a cone or a torus, just because of its geometry. But for the most part, they're already UV unwrapped. Um, UV unwrapping is basically how you map the texture to your object. So if you can imagine a piece of paper, or like a cube, a paper cube. Um, you know, like I don't know if any of you guys did this, but back in elementary school, when I was a young child, we used to like have these little papers that we would cut out in like the shape of a cube and then we would fold them up into like a paper block. Imagine your cube is like a paper block and you can unfold each face of it. Um, each face is going to have a texture map to it. That's basically what UV unwrapping is. It's putting a texture on each face of the object. Um, UV unwrapping can get pretty complicated. I'm not going to go over that fully in this video. There's tons of UV unwrapping tutorials and quite honestly, I'm not very good at it. Uh, so I don't want to sit here and kind of uh, tell you wrong information about UV unwrapping. Um, but I will do some research on it, and there will be a UV unwrapping tutorial in the future. But right now, we're just focused on texturing itself and very basic UV unwrapping. Sorry I rambled, but now let's get into adding the texture. So um, if you have an object that isn't UV unwrapped, like if you have an actual model you're trying to texture, the way you would go about basic UV unwrapping is you would hit tab to go into edit mode. Uh, edit mode is basically where you can edit the geometry of the object. So you can see we have the vertex vertexes right here. If you go up here to the top right, which you can't see because of my webcam, let me move that down real quick. If you go up here to the top right, you can see that we have these three options right here. Um, this is vertex select, second one is edge select, and then the last one is face select. So by clicking these, you can change your selection mode. So you can see now we're in edge select, so we can select the edges. And then the face select, we can select the faces. So I'm going to stay in vertex mode for now, move my webcam back up. And now what we're going to do um, is if you were trying to UV unwrap this on a very basic level by basically letting Blender do all the work, you would hit U, and you have a few options right here. You have Unwrap, Smart UV Project, Cube Projection Cylinder, Sphere, Project from View, and then Project from View with Boundaries. So um, Unwrap is the most basic of basic UV unwrapping methods. Um, I wouldn't use this unless you have a very, very, very simple object that you don't need 100% um, accuracy in your texturing. Like if it's a background object or something, you would use that. Smart UV Project uh, basically is a little bit more complicated. Um, this works normally um, a lot of the time. Um, it still isn't accurate. Uh, but it basically, Blender just takes the faces and does some calculations and then UV projects it in a smart way. Um, cube projection projects the texture as if it was a cube. Cylinder projection projects the texture as if it was wrapped around a cylinder. Sphere projection, again, projects the texture as if it was wrapped around a sphere. Project from view basically projects the texture onto the object from however you're viewing it from the camera. Um, project from view bounds, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> what the difference is from that one. Um, if any of you guys know, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, and then you have these mark seam and clear seams. So uh, mark seam and clear seam um, is if you are actually UV unwrapping the object. Um, basically, the texture has to end at some point. The texture isn't infinite. It can't wrap around the uh, object infinitely. So there's always going to be a seam. Typically, seams are placed in places that you can't see, like on the bottom of a character's foot or on the back of something. Something that you're not going to be seeing from the camera that there's a seam in. And... Um, basically those seams basically mark where the texture is going to be mapped. So that's uh, how you would UV unwrap an object if you needed to. Uh, now let's get into actually applying the texture to this object. So for this plane, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and hit U and then unwrap it just in case. Uh, I always like to do that. I don't really know why. But I do it just in case, um, especially if I have the plane subdivided, um, which I'm probably going to do. Um, let's go ahead and subdivide this cube. Basically, just right-click, click Subdivide. I'm going to subdivide it about... Oops. Uh, I'm going to subdivide it about 65 times. Uh, that gives us a pretty good amount of geometry to work with. Um, and then we're going to go up here to the top right, 
um, right up here, right under this little blender logo. Uh, your cursor will turn into a crosshair. Just click and drag over. That'll split your window. And then go right under the blender logo again where this little ball and grid is. Click and then go to shader editor. Now the shader editor is where you're going to be editing all your materials and stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move my webcam down here real quick just so it's not in the way of anything. But this shader editor um, is basically where you're going to be editing all your materials, adding all your textures, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click new right here to add a new material. Now, um, in older blend versions, if you're using 2.79 or below, um, it's kind of the same, but uh, this principal BSDF would be replaced by diffuse BSDF. The diffuse BSDF was replaced by the principal because it basically has everything. It's like a all-in-one shader, basically, is what it's called by a lot of people in the Blender community. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, we're going to use this, um, and now what we're going to do real quick uh, before we actually get the texture nodes and stuff in here is an easy, a very easy way to get texture nodes and work with nodes in general is the Node Wrangler add-on. The Node Wrangler add-on comes default in Blender. Um, it's very useful. Um, if you're working with nodes at all, even if you're just doing basic texturing, I would recommend having this just because it makes everything so much easier. But basically, uh, I didn't show how I did that. Just go up here to edits at the top left, and then preferences, and then add-ons. It's right in the middle right here. And then just in this little search bar, just type in Node Wrangler. Um, just enable it, uh, save preferences, and then you're good. So once you have the Node Wrangler add-on, you can select your principal BSDF, make sure it's the only thing selected, and then hit Control T on your keyboard. Now Control T will bring up this little uh, texture coordinate setup. Um, it has a texture coordinate node, which basically tells Blender um, how the texture is going to be mapped. Um, the mapping node uh, basically shows where the um, texture is going to be mapped, the location of it on the object, the rotation of it to the object, and the scale of it to the object. Um, this, uh, I don't really mess with a whole lot. Uh, this, pretty much the only thing I use is generated or UV. Uh, UV is used if your object is UV unwrapped. Generated is is if your object isn't UV unwrapped. So, um, you could use this setup if you're just using one texture, if you're just using a single texture. But what I, li what I like to do is a little shortcut that is Control shift t Now, Control shift t will bring up this file menu. Uh, I'm going to go to my desktop and then find where I have uh, my textures. And then I'm just going to select, uh, click on one and then shift select the rest and then click principled texture setup. This will bring all your textures in. You don't have to do anything. It's literally two or three clicks and you have all your textures in here. So the textures that it has brought in, um, everything's already set up. Uh, you don't really have to do anything. But I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and go over it just in case you need to do it manually. Uh, so basically this first texture is the base color texture and it is our base color. It's our color map, our albedo, our diffuse. Um, this, uh, its color space is set to sRGB because it is giving color data because it is our color map. And it's just basically going into the base color of the principal BSDF. Now the next one is the roughness map. The roughness map basically has blacks and whites and... Um, Blacks are less rough, white is more rough. I'm pretty sure that's it. If it's not, then it's just swapped. But uh, the roughness map just gives roughness data, um, how rough the material is, how light reflects off of it. Um, less roughness is more glossy, more reflective. More rough is just more rough. Um, it's not reflecting much light. Um, normal map is uh, basically fake displacement. It's fake geometry. Um, it uses height map data to fake geometry onto an object um, so it just gives it realistic looking geometry without actually adding geometry and now the displacement map with the displacement node um, actually edits the geometry of your object um, it actually raises and lowers the faces based on blacks and whites from the textures so um, if I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the cycles here um, and then I'm going to go into render view and when we go into render view we can see we have our texture right here uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this by hitting N. But we have our texture right here. Um, right now, uh, that's a good size. Um, if your texture is too big or too small, what you can do is you can hit Tab to go into Edit Mode. And then go back over here where we switch to the Shader Editor and then just go to UV Editor. And you can see we have all of our faces laid out for the texture right here. If we click A and then scale it up, we can see the texture is moving over here on the right. Uh, but I'm going to keep it the same because it looks the right size to me. Um, pretty much because I don't have anything to base it off of, but it looks the right size to me. 
So we're going to keep it like that. So uh, basically what we can do now is we can do something with the displacement node. Uh, the displacement node, like I said, is going to actually displace our geometry. So uh, what we can do is we can go over here um, to this little um, wrench. Actually, no, we're not. Uh, we are going to go to Feature Sets over here on the Rendered Properties. It's the first tab. Feature Set, set it to Experimental. Um, and then we can go down to our Material Properties, or our Material tab is this little circle with the little checkerboard pattern. Go all the way down, um, and then under Settings, uh, under Surface, Displacement, change it to Displacement and Bump. So now what that's going to do is, you can see we're already right here, this is being lifted up, it's being displaced from where the geometry was, but it's not really a lot. So what's going on here? So basically, uh, we have geometry on this plane, uh, we have all this, but we don't have enough geometry. So what we can do is we can go ahead and add a modifier, and we can add a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, we can change it to adaptive subdivision um, and then that'll basically just subdivide the plane to uh, whatever it needs. So we can see right here, um, the plane is displaced a lot more. Uh, so we can change this to whatever we want. Um, you can also uh, you can also change the levels for the viewport. Um, but adaptive subdivision basically um, makes it to where the geometry is subdivided based on how close the camera is. So for example, over here, it's gonna be subdivided more than over there. So, um, yeah, uh, that's basically that. So, um, yeah, that's adaptive subdivision. Um, displacement, uh, the node, you can also change um, the level of displacement. Uh, what you can also do instead of adaptive subdivision is you can just add a regular subdivision surface. So for example, if I do this and then I change the viewport, um, you can see that it's doing that. But I'm going to change it to adaptive subdivision. Um, basically, uh, the dicing scale is how much um, geometry is going to be added. Um, so the dicing scale is at 1 right here. Um, and you can see right here, final scale render is 1 and then viewport is 8. So the viewport, which is what we're looking at right now, is going to be a lower quality than the final render. So the final render is going to have more displacement um, and more geometry based on where the camera is. So that's basically that. Um, and yeah, um, that's basically the texture. Um, you can always do a lot more with this um, if you want. But everything is looking good right now, so I don't really see a reason why uh, we should do anything else with this texture. But you can see the displacement right here on these rocks. Um, you see that the rocks are actually lifted up from the plane. Uh, and just stuff like this through here, you can see that um, the geometry is actually being displaced. <coughs> Um, the higher quality texture you're going to have, the higher quality the displacement's going to be just because it's a higher quality texture. So you're not going to have as much blurriness when you get close to it because, again, it's a higher quality texture. But let's go ahead and see what these maps look like by themselves. So if I hit Control shift and click on a node, I can view it how it is. Um, so once this updates right here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this subdivision surface for now. But you can see the base color right here, um, it doesn't really give a lot of anything, really. Um, it just gives the base color for the material. Um, it looks a lot brighter because it doesn't have any of the other maps uh, showing how lighting should react to it. Um, the roughness map by itself, um, it's these blacks and whites. Um, we don't really have a lot of blacks, we just have dark grays because they don't really have um, any high points, really. It's just these like little rocks. Um, the white is low points, so you can see over here where this comes up more, it's more gray instead of white. Uh, the normal map, this um, is showing where the geometry should be, the fake geometry, so you can see all these rocks and stuff are coming out, all these little crevices and stuff. Uh, basically just adds more detail to it, and then the displacement map is basically this like doughy looking uh, roughness map. Uh, that's basically all it is. Uh, basically, the whites are what goes up, and then the darks are what goes down. Um, so if we just 
go back to this, we can see our texture again. And yeah, that's basically it for that. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I could add. Um, I don't think there's anything else to add, really. But uh, that's basically it. Um, thanks, guys, so much for watching. My name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.